in the June 2017 edition of What's New Massachusetts. Hop on the commuter rail and revisit North Shore's Salem, Massachusetts. The witch city is undergoing a magical transformation of sorts thanks to new businesses popping up over the past few years, like Wicked Good Books on Essex Street. Looking for the spooktacular good time Salem is known for? Kick off the Halloween season early with the Salem Horror Fest, a month-long creep show organized by Kevin Letourneau. What's new, Massachusetts? Here are your co-hosts, Sam Baltrusis and Sharon Filia. Welcome to the June edition of What's New, Massachusetts. My name is Sam Baltrusis. I'm an author and journalist. Joining me is my lovely co-host, Sharon Filia. Hi, Sam. Hi, Sharon. How are you? So we just got back from Salem. We sure did. It was great. And, you know, Salem is known, you know, traditionally for the Salem Witch Trials of 1692, but there's so much more. It's really changing. Yeah, well, what happened in 1692 really has left a psychic imprint on the location. I talk a lot about it. I've written a book called Ghosts of Salem, yes. and I have given tours there for years. But I feel like um, there's a sort of a changing face of Salem. I think that there's there are new restaurants, new things to do. Uh, they, they recognize the past, the dark past, but have embraced it and sort of are, are moving toward the future. They are, and, and as we've discussed, uh, one, of the, one of the most wonderful things that they're doing, they're really embracing the LGBT community, a very, very wonderful, wonderful thing that Kim Driscoll, the mayor of Salem, is really at the forefront of. And you know, the one thing I noticed about Salem was that it's a tremendously peaceful town. It's, it's nice, it's quiet, you can just walk around, have fun, enjoy the restaurants. It's really changing. It's really changing. Well, speaking of the LGBT community, there, uh, there's the North Shore Pride that happens in Salem, and it's going on for a few years. And they didn't have a Pride celebration, and that's something that's that's happened since Kim Driscoll's taken office. Um, and we're going to talk to someone later, Kevin, who is a big leader in, when it comes to the LGBT uh, community in Salem, and he's launching this amazing horror fest coming up in, in September, October. It's amazing, and and for me, being African American, I really think that that the LGBT LGBT effort, um, it parallels with the uh, civil rights movement, so I'm very, very for all of that. And what I also love about Salem is there are new restaurants, there's mm -hmm. the, the Ledger restaurant happening on uh, Washington Street, mm -hmm. right around the corner of Wicked Good Books, and there's a new beautiful boutique hotel that's opening up as well. Yeah. It's called Hotel Salem. Yeah, and uh, there are so many shops as you're walking down, sort of like, the, it was Essex Street, there are shops everywhere, boutiques. Uh, books, clothing, there's even a CVS. Anything you want is right there. And it's a tremendous, it's a walking town. And, you know, we were talking to, um, you know, to, to the owner of, of, of Wicked Good Books. You can walk everywhere. It's right there. And it's just a nice town to go and visit with the family. I think Salem is just much more than a, than a, than a, a witch town. Like we're, Absolutely. And like there was, before there was just witch shops and all that. There's so much more now to it. And there's a lot of history, a lot of restaurants, a lot of things to do. Uh, that's beyond 1692. So we are going to go to one of my favorite places in Salem, Wicked Good Books. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. This is Sharon Filiar for What's New Massachusetts. Here we are at Wicked Good Books, a bookstore located in the witch city of Salem, Massachusetts. We're about to speak to the co-owner, Miss Denise Kent, in just a moment. Here we are now with Miss Denise Kent, one of the owners of Wicked Good Books, located here in Salem, Massachusetts. Miss Kent, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for being here. Now, this is a wonderful location. Even coming here, you're looking up and down Essex Street. There are so many wonderful people enjoying the sun. What demographic does your bookstore uh, cater to? Well, we have um, our fantastic locals. Um, Salem has a really great local downtown um, neighborhood. Uh, a lot of people live and work and play here. Um, and we also serve a lot of visitors. You know, we have a lot of tourists that come to Salem for its history. So it's really two kind of very different demographics. Indeed. Now, I know that our own Sam Baltrusis has a few of his books showcased here. Now, Salem is known for the witch trials. A lot of people come here during Halloween. So is 
is the majority of your books or a vast a portion of your books catered to the hauntings and, you know, evil spirits and witches? <laughs> well, yeah, it depends on what people are looking for. We have we have a, a vast array of books that are uh, about Salem's history. And that does include, of course, um, witch history. It also includes maritime history. Um, you know, we have a really rich um, history in um, literature as well. Um, many local writers to the North Shore and uh, as well as our architecture and um, just we have just a, a beautiful thriving um, city and I think it's going through a real renaissance right now um, and I embrace all of of the parts of, of Salem history that's what makes it special here of course now uh, speaking of that architecture your store now you've done a great deal of renovations um, you've you've altered yes. the store but can you talk a little bit about that okay well this store was a bookstore um, it was a family bookstore for almost 40 years and it was a used bookstore people remembered it as having you know towering books um, going up to the ceiling and those guys were retiring and we were really concerned that there wouldn't be a general bookstore in Salem um, and there had been another bookstore in Salem as well that that had closed so we sort of panicked and um, and, <laughs> and decided to go into the bookstore business and so and so here we are and it's been a real labor of love that there is a hotel located somewhere nearby that's new. Uh, there's a lot of new construction here in Salem. And yes, there's a hotel called the Hotel uh, Hotel Salem that's being built right next door to us. And that's going to have outdoor dining and it's going to have a rooftop restaurant. Um, it's a boutique hotel. Um, there's quite a few new um, construction projects going on, uh, including a new restaurant around the corner. Um, it's just a great place to come and eat and shop. And now we're going to have more hotel space so people can stay. Now that's very interesting. Now just to give an idea to our viewers who are not familiar with the Salem area, how close are we to all of the historical um, sites and tours from, from Essex Street? We are right in the center of everything. So Essex Street is sort of the heart of, you know, the dining, shopping, and, um, and historical uh, section. And um, Salem is fairly walkable. I mean, you don't need a car. Come here by, by ferry, come here by train, and you can walk to all the good stuff. See, and that's what's so amazing about this area. And we've done um, interviews also in Quincy, which is also a walking town. When you come to this area of Salem, it's one-stop shopping. You can come here, stay at a hotel, get something to eat, check out a few tours. It's beautiful. You can people watch and do everything right here. So Essex is the main artery, would you say? Yes, absolutely. That is so exciting. So where do you see Wicked Good Books? What a direction do you see it going to? Oh, I think that uh, we're almost three years old now, and we keep going um, deeper into our Salem inventory. We really want to carry a uh, real depth and breadth of um, Salem and uh, New England books, uh, as well as general fiction and nonfiction. And we carry toys as well because, you know, we, we like to live in the imagination and book people. Right, and children love toys, and like um, I'm kind of still a kid myself, so I like looking at the toys as well. Now, this is a tiny bit off topic. Do you have a favorite witch story that you can share with our viewers, or a nice quick one? Um, I have a, there was a customer who came in with her baby and who insisted that there was a, uh, um, that there was a presence, a ghost in Town Hall, which is right around the corner from us. Right. She said that her baby could sense um, the presence of supernatural beings and that he, yes. <laughs> and so, uh, oh I don't know, I don't know. So that's just that's just one of them. Yeah. Well, well, you must see a wide swath of, of different demographics that come into the store. Very, very a tremendous location because you're right here, as you mentioned, in the heart of Salem. We encourage everyone to come on down and check it out. Wicked Good Books, located here on Essex Street, right here in Salem, Massachusetts. Denise Kent, thank you so much for joining us thank today. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. What a great time we had talking to Miss Denise Kent of Wicked Good Books right here in downtown Salem. you got to come down and check it out. Beautiful day. People are walking all along the street here. And I think I'm going to check out a book. <gasps> what do we have here? 
by our very own Mr. Sam Baltrusis, The Ghosts of Salem. If you'd like to pick up a copy of this book, come on down and check it out. Welcome back to What's New Massachusetts. Again, we're doing a feature on Salem, and one of the major players in Salem is Kevin Letourneau. Hello, Hi. hello. Hi, Kevin. Um, so tell me about your experiences in Salem. So did you grow up in Salem, or what's your background? No, I grew up in New Hampshire, uh, moved to New York for a couple of years, and when I came back, I uh, decided to finish my degree at Salem State University. So I've been on the North Shore in Salem for about 12, 13 years now. Lucky number 13. <laughs> So what I when I first met you, I was really impressed with what you were doing with uh, the North Shore Pride and Salem, uh, Salem Out Loud and, and Go Out Loud in Salem. So tell me about that, so the LGBT community and your ties to that in Salem. Sure. Uh, in 2012, I was uh, campaign manager for a local uh, city council uh, race uh, with Derek Marsikowski, who um, was an out a uh, businessman in town, and he wanted to have an event to sort of acknowledge um, that he, he was part of the gay community and bring the gay community together in Salem. And um, so we put together this event, something like that had not been done in Salem for, for quite a while. Um, and there was this huge um, showing of people, uh, a lot of gay couples in the area um, that we were kind of surprised about because we didn't really have like a gay night or a club or something on the North Shore that really brought everyone together and so that kind of uh, gave the idea that all right, there's this community here but you know we don't have an outlet and so we started partnering with local businesses in town and creating parties and events and fundraisers um, to really sort of bring that community together and expand to include you know the straight ally community and make it about uh, an experience where people can just feel comfortable to be themselves. Um, so that uh, grew and turned into a really fun uh, experience um, that led us all the way to doing Halloween parties at the Hawthorne <laughs> Hotel with Sharon Needles. Oh, uh, scream out loud. Yes. That was pretty fabulous. It was really, really fun. <laughs> I mean, 30 Rock said it best, there's nothing better than a gay Halloween. So. <laughs> yes, so Halloween is a gay Christmas, basically. Yes. <laughs> so Kevin, so t like, like with the changing face of Salem, like I feel like that the LGBT community like being embraced by Mayor Kim Driscoll, um, and you're kind of a major player in that. Like, do you think things have changed? Very much so. Yeah. Very much so. In fact, uh, Salem was uh, one of the first communities in Massachusetts to pass the non-discrimination ordinance um, to uh, include trans protections. Um, so we were really proud of that. And um, Mayor Driscoll and uh, the, the No Place for Hate Committee uh, in Salem has done so much um, to really uh, solidify uh, the community of Salem as a welcoming um, place for all. And like, I have noticed a change just as someone has give, that gives tours in Salem. Yeah. Like the sort of the change, it's, a, it's becoming more progressive. And I think it makes total sense because in 1692 of what happened, like that it would make sense that it would be a, a, a community that welcomes the others or people that are feel marginalized by society. Exactly. And uh, Salem is the second oldest city in the nation and, and a port city. So, you know, Salem has a history of um, having access to the rest of the world. And so uh, I think that uh, there's a sort of curiosity, a cultural curiosity in Salem that's always been here and continues to grow. Salem is very much a city um, of outsiders in all senses of the word. Yeah. And so the, the North Shore Pride, which I think is like a couple years old, uh, it's June 24th, right? Uh, yeah, actually they've been around for five years, I believe. Five this years. Is the year, yeah. That's um, amazing. It is incredible, Ted, for uh, a community as relatively small as Salem is to have its own um, you know, parade. Uh, it, of course, it represents the entire North Shore, um, but no one does parades like Salem. So your background leading up to this, uh, to you have a big event coming up in September and October, yes. and this is why you're here. So it's the Salem Horror Fest, yes. and tell me about that. Oh, long time coming. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a huge Halloween freak. I just have always been drawn to Salem. Um, grew up on Elvira, and I love Elvira. Jo who doesn't? <laughs> um, and Joe brought big Briggs on TNT and Monster Vision, and so growing up as this, you know, sort of bullied gay boy, um, really latched on to uh, these. Uh, horror hosts, um, and for me, horror, uh, because of them, they sort of recontextualized horror in a fun, wild, spunky way. And so I was, I have this sort of nostalgic, cheery feeling when it comes to horror that some people don't really get. I'm like, oh, it's so much fun, blood and guts. Um, <laughs> but it's it's largely due to, to the fact that um, Elvira and Joe Bart Biggs kind of brought humor to it, and, um, and there's a sort of craft and uh, satire that comes with the horror genre that I've always really latched onto um, and 
to your point about Salem, uh, Salem's history, uh, Salem has an authority when it comes to fear. Um, oh, yeah. And, and we have a responsibility to sort of remind the world what happens when fear runs amok. Because uh, you can go anywhere uh, and people are going to know what Salem is. It's sort of this international brand recognition. And, um, and so, of course, everyone's going to say, oh, the witches. And there are plenty of people who are really annoyed and sick of hearing about the witches. But it's important. And, um, and I think that, you know, Salem, uh, we need to do everything we can to remind the world what can happen. Um, and, and horror has always been a great way to uh, explore cultural fears. I love that you're taking a cerebral approach to horror. And I think that the people, they, they're sort of like the, the surface level. And I think people that just like like blood and guts, like they, they'll be interested in this as well. For sure. Um, but I think that there's also like, a, there's layers to it. And, and when we first started talking about the Salem Horror Fest, I was very excited about those layers. Now, tell me about, so it's gonna be a couple of weeks that it's gonna unfold at the weekends starting in September? Yeah, we open on September 21st at the PBD Essex Museum, which I have to pinch myself every day to be like, wait, I'm throwing over horror-related <laughs> festival in partnership with the PBD Essex Museum. Um, they have an amazing exhibit uh, coming out. It's uh, Kirk Hammett, the guitarist from Metallica, has a classic horror collection uh, like no other. It's insane. And it's going to be on display uh, oh at the gosh. PBD Essex Museum. And That's so we're so cool. partnering with them to sort of bring um, you know, bring the horror community to uh, to the museum and come embrace this exhibit, um, and also explore these uh, these sub subtextual themes. And so that kicks off uh, with an evening night party at the museum on September twenty first. So there's parties and there's going to be screenings too. Yes, uh, and eighteen in fact. Eighteen screenings. Yes. And are people, can you get like a VIP pass for the whole yeah. shebang? In fact, I recommend it. Um, as a you know Halloween freak, uh, part of um, being a horror fan is this sort of tradition of a horror movie a day. Uh, and I've always had my like my, my checklist or my calendar where I, on this day I, I watched Hellraiser uh, or I watched uh, The Howling 4. Um, <laughs> and so I kind of want to re recreate that experience and sort of um, offer people that if they, if they want to you know, bunk, hunker down and see a bunch of really great horror, um, get the VIP at. P pass, you get access to everything, and you get to you know fill out. On this day, I saw Night of the Living Dead and Matinee and Gods and Monsters. Now, you're also going to bring in like celebrities too um, that yes. are from the horror films, and uh, are people going to be able to meet these people? Yes, we have okay. meet and greets uh, in partnership with Count Orlark's Nightmare Gallery on Ooh. Derby Street, which is another incredible museum in Salem, one of my favorites. Um, and so we are bringing uh, Laura Park Lincoln, who is one of my favorite final girls from Friday the 13th, part seven, uh, who will be in town at the same time as Kane Hodder, who uh, many of you might know him as the ultimate Jason Voorhees. He played Jason Voorhees, the man behind the mask be uh, from part seven through 10. Jason X. Um, so they're coming. We're also bringing Ken Foree, uh, who is a helicopter pilot in Dawn of the Dead, um, to be part of uh, this Salem Horror Award in which we're going to honor Dwayne Jones, um, the uh, black actor from Night of the Living Dead, for his cultural contribution to the genre as uh, being one of the uh, first positive portrayals of a person of color in the hero role in cinema. Um, so Ken Foree being in Dawn of the Dead sort of carried that torch and is going to speak about his friendship with Dwayne Jones and working with George Romero um, and his own uh, experience in, in the industry. I like that you're shining a spotlight on the fact the portrayal of the African American, like people of color on um, in film. Yeah. And like, do you think that that's changing? Because uh, I do, I, there's a lot of movies that came out recently that I really think is a positive representation. Very much so. Um, you know, it's... <laughs> Long time coming, uh, long overdue rather, but um, Get Out was a huge success. Jordan oh, Peele's yeah. uh, directorial debut, um, and I feel like he really, uh, you know, hit it on the spot of, of how effective horror can be and how it can represent true fears in our society and our culture and when it comes to identity. Uh, Roger Ebert has this great quote about movies being um, empathy machines and how they allow us to experience life through other people's perspectives. And so my goal for Salem Horror Fest is to find a way to uh, facilitate people experiencing each other's fears as a way to create a greater sense of understanding and, and empathy of, of um, where that's coming from. So if people want to get tickets, where do they go? Uh, SalemHorror.com. Um, 
and check out our Facebook page. We got all kinds of exclusive content that we're releasing um, per event, per screening. Uh, we're doing double feature screenings at Cinema Salem, uh, seven nights in a row, and they all are paired together based uh, around a sort of common theme. Um, themes, there's intersectionality throughout the entire festival and the entire program. Um, but they largely deal with race, gender, sexuality, uh, colonialism, um, and you know, media, uh, the role of media um, in our society. And so this is not a lecture. We're not here to tell anyone um, what to think or to feel, but we really just want people to, first and foremost, have fun. But oh, yeah. Sort of uh, expand um, their perception of what horror is and can be and understand that these movies, in, in a lot of cases, are, are saying something about what scares us, or, or maybe not you personally, but it scares someone. And this gives us an opportunity to um, you know, feel and understand others. I'm so excited about Salem Horror Fest coming up in September and October. Kevin, it was a pleasure talking to you. Thanks, thank Sam. You so this much is really for your fun. Time. And get your tickets now. I'm telling you, they're going to sell out. So thank That's you. Awesome. We're going to run a promo of Salem Horror Fest. See you there. Americans today do not feel safe. People are scared. People are going to die. Our country's going to hell. First eyewitness accounts of this grisly development came from people who were understandably frightened and almost incoherent. We will not prematurely or unnecessarily risk the course of worldwide nuclear war, but neither will we shrink from that risk at any time, it must be faced. The whole world's gonna blow up anyway, so we should just do whatever we want. They're gonna bomb us? Today, there is no safe place to be. Welcome back to the June edition of What's New Massachusetts. Sharon, that was a great show. It was, we really learned a lot. So what did you learn about Salem? Well, I learned that it's really, it's really changed. It's not just witch trials and like spooky, eerie things. It's families, it's museums, it's the seaport, it's restaurants. It's a wonderful, wonderful town to go and visit for the day. And it's tremendously, I really felt, felt a real sense of peace there. It was a very calm, very calm visit that we had. What I liked about the uh, Salem Horror Fest, uh, it's it's going to be really cerebral. It's not just the typical slasher type films that mm -hmm. they're going to play in September and October. Um, it's going to be really cerebral and kind of look at sort of the nature of horror uh, and how uh, horror represents the others and like people that are marginalized by the status quo. And that sort of dovetails with what we talked about, how Salem is really embracing the LGBT community. Such an important cause, and to me it parallels the civil rights movement, whereas we want people to feel comfortable being who they are and to feel free to, to be themselves. What, what's happened under the leadership of Kim Driscoll, the mayor, is that it's becoming a hub for those who um, need sanctuary, it, and it should be, because like, well, think about Indeed. what happened in 1692. This should be a place where people feel safe of all right. walks of life, and I love that, that the mayor is doing that. It's become a sanctuary city. Uh, it's become a place for people all over the world have gathered mm -hmm. and visit, and I think that people that have felt um, sort of marginalized by society, they feel right. comfortable in Salem. It's almost like they're being called there. It is, and it's very important for people who feel that way to have a place that they can go to and just feel comfortable and accepted and be able to just enjoy themselves. Very important. And what's really cool about Salem is that now there's a ferry that goes from downtown Boston to Salem. Oh, I want to take that. <laughs> I was looking on YouTube because I, you know, I, I do that. So I was on YouTube and I was looking and it looks tremendously scenic and so pretty. I would love to do that. It's very beautiful. You can also take the commuter rail. Mm -hmm. You can take a bus. You take can drive. Ferry. Take the ferry. Take the ferry. Take the ferry. It's <laughs> a lot of fun. I, I also, last year I gave tour to Baker's Island with the Baker's Island Lighthouse. Right. Highly recommended. It's at the Visitor Center, the Welcome Center at Salem. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it, They happen uh, throughout the summer, and it's just such a peaceful, beautiful, scenic view. It is, and I, and I tell you, you don't have to spend a lot of money. It's a, I, There were so many families there, little kids, big kids, couples. It's a wonderful place to go. You don't have to spend a lot of money, or you can if you want to, but you can go there and learn a lot, not just about the witch trials, but about everything else that Salem has to offer. 
And make sure you check out Wicked Good Books. Yes, that, that's a very <laughs> nice bookstore. And the owners are just very, very kind, hardworking people. They've really done a great job there. And they were so excited that we were visiting. And yes. I was I actually gave a book signing there uh, three years ago, right when they opened. And this is coming up, June is their three year anniversary. Isn't that something? And it's just indicative of the new type of uh, businesses that are being opened there. And as we talked about, there are lots of developments and building going on. They're really changing the face of Salem. Awesome. So this has been a fantastic edition of What's New Massachusetts. Yes. Sharon and everybody else, we'll see you next month. Bye. Have a great month. We will not prematurely or unnecessarily risk the course of worldwide nuclear war, but neither will we shrink from that risk at any time it must be faced. The whole world's gonna blow up anyway, so we should just do whatever we want. They're gonna bomb us? Today, there is no safe place to be. Americans today do not feel safe. People are scared. People are going to die. Our country's going to hell. First eyewitness accounts of this grisly development came from people who were understandably frightened and almost incoherent.